All right, here we go. This will be the second Stephen King book I review in this channel, and I'm so excited about it because um, this is a book I was I've been waiting for some time uh, from the library, and it is a book I heard about before and wanted to read. Um, the same thing occurs with If It Bleeds, which I may read next. Uh, but also, my library also has Misery and The Shining. So I'm deciding here. Again, I don't usually like to read about married couples and stuff like that. But you know what? It's an audiobook. I can make it work. Um, I can make it work. So here we are with this one. Um, so let's read the synopses. Uh, okay, content warnings, I think, for this book would be um, discussions on alcoholism. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, graphic violence. I think that's like the main thing. Those are like the main two things, I think. So for some reason in the beginning of this synopsis is this duration 24 hours 13 minutes 5 seconds which by the way I'm pretty sure that is a duration of the audiobook but I could be wrong so that's uh, um that's something to to consider I did read this as an audiobook so like those are the content warnings in the book but also let's begin with the synopsis so legendary storyteller Stephen King goes deep into the well of his imagination in this spellbinding novel about a 17 year old boy who inherits the keys to a parallel world where good and evil are at war and the stakes could not be higher for their world or ours. Charlie Reed looks like a regular high school kid, great at baseball and football, a decent student, but he carries a heavy load. His mom was killed in a hit and run accident when he was 10 and grief drove his dad to drink. Charlie learned how to take care of himself and his dad. Then when Charlie is 17, he meets Howard Bowditch, a recluse with a big dog in a big house at the top of a big hill. In the backyard is a locked shed from which strange sounds emerge as if some creature is trying to escape. When Mr. Bowditch dies, he leaves Charlie the house, a massive amount of gold, a cassette tape telling a story that is impossible to believe, and a responsibility far too massive for a boy to shoulder. Because within the shed is a portal to another world, one whose denizens are in peril and whose monstrous leaders may destroy their own world and ours. In this parallel universe where two moons race across the sky and the grand towers of a, sp of a sprawling palace pierce the clouds, there are exiled princesses and princes who suffer horrific punishments. There are dungeons, there are games in which men and women must fight each other to the death for the amusement of the fair one. Fair one is in quotes, by the way. And there is a magic sundial that can turn back time. A story as old as myth and as startling and iconic as the rest of King's work. Fairy tale is about an ordinary, an ordinary guy forced into the hero's role by circumstance, and it is both spectacularly suspenseful and satisfying. So, for anyone curious, this is definitely fantasy. I would, I'm not even gonna call this horror. I don't think this is a horror book. This is definitely more fantasy with some graphic violence there, but definitely fantasy. Um, so I, that's kind of what I'm, I, I would call it. This is fantasy. This is similar to, I think, similar to like an isekai or portal fantasy where you find yourself in like the regular world and then you find yourself transported back to the, um, 
to the fantastical world. And this was more like more like Portal in that area. So yeah, so this is kind of like an isekai where um so yeah this is this is pretty good with that area so that is kind of what i want to tell you that this is not horror so there's not going to be a lot of horror elements in in the in the um in the book so yeah just just keep that in mind um as you read this is more fantasy than anything else um so the prose is good. It's actually, I will say, um, I com I mentioned that Sleeping Beauty's prose, uh, or Sleeping Beauty's, yeah, Sleeping Beauty's. The prose in Sleeping Beauty's, I think I mentioned it in my blog post. I can't remember if I mentioned it in the channel, but what I did say when I was reviewing it, either one of those, um, is that the prose is very dry in nature. Uh, I mentioned that the prose is, is 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 good and easy to read, but at the same time, it's also very dry, while also being straightforward. Um, and this was because Sleeping Beauties was written in third person, but in first person, uh, uh, Stephen King's prose is more it's more like straightforward. It doesn't feel dry. It just feels like straightforward. Something I would be able to read in Braille without a problem. So that is, I think, a difference that I noticed when it comes to so far in the two books that I've read uh, by Stephen King is that so far, so far, his third person prose is a bit dry while being straightforward. Uh, so it feels kind of like textbook dry, but it's also in first person, it's a lot more vibrant, if that makes sense. Um, I hope it makes sense. It does feel a little bit more vibrant while also being straightforward and accessible. So that's something I I, I found I find really interesting and I, I've enjoyed um, seeing. Um, so let yeah, let me let me know uh, what you think about that um, in that area, but also let me know about um, if you have any other Stephen King books you'd recommend me to read. I, I, I'm gonna get through the ones in my library or through some of the ones in my library at least. That I'm curious about and then from there we'll I'll, I'll look for, through more but that those are my thoughts right now the, the third person is a bit dry but like the first person feels vibrant um so that's that's kind of where I'm at with that so the story is told m m the majority of it is told through Charlie's point of view we have a couple of other we have a couple of instances we have two instances or so where two or three instances where it, where it kind of changes so we have like the cassette uh the chapters where the cassette is playing and telling and where mr bodich is showing the story telling us a story oh and by the way if you listen to the audiobook you actually get the effect of the cassette like you hear the little hissing sound that you would hear from like an old cassette player and i know this because i grew up in the early 2000s so i know and i remember in the early 2000s what the cassette player sounds like and like the little hissing noise i remember it quite well um before cds became a thing and and stuff like that i i had a uh, cassette player that the library gave me so yes i had like a cassette player um i had a little yeah i had a little cassette player and they used to send me cassette tapes uh the new jersey talking book and braille center by the way that's what it's called uh, they're part of the nls uh bard uh, libraries um, but basically they they used to send me cassette players and I used to be able to put them in my in my um, in my cassette recorder which they gave me and I would that's how I used to listen to audiobooks at the time and then it, at some point they developed into cartridges which they don't send me because I, I asked them not to send me books anymore uh, eventually but they they did develop and use and now are using like cartridges and these players last I checked so and now they have an app, which is what I usually use. But yes, I remember what the hissing of the cassette players sounded like. That that and when you and when you had to like if you wanted to read from the beginning, because there are several books I remember reading over and over from the library because they were really good. 
Um, and I remember, uh, like the sound it made when you had to like rewind it. So if you are listening to the audiobook, you're going to get the little hissing of the cassette and Stephen King narrates this part because it does say in the book, in the audiobook that it is narrated with Stephen King. I had assumed that there was going to be some interview or something where Stephen King was talking at the end. Not that Stephen King would be actually narrating a part of the book, but he does narrate the part of Bowditch telling the story as he's about to get, as as he gets like a, a, a as he's getting this heart attack. So, which is so sad, by the way. Um, so there's that. There are those instances, and then there's an instance where it changes from past tense to present tense when we're when and we switch to radar's point of view so it changes to like third person limited for some reason and i just didn't see the point in that but also it is told in first the majority of the story is told in first person retrospective so it is written mainly in the past but there are moments where we switch to the present where charlie kind of tells us okay so this is you know at the time here's what i was thinking and i wish i could say this so it is kind of reflective of sorts but I, I just didn't see the point of it switching to Radar's point of view and switching to third person limited. I just, uh, present tense. I don't, I don't see it. I don't. Mm -mm -mm -mm. The world building. I really enjoyed the world building in this book. Uh, I appreciate that it was very soft world building and that the rules were not, did not take a big place and neither did the magic. It didn't take a huge part of the story. I appreciate soft world building and soft magic systems more than anything else. So I think that was great. I really enjoyed it. Um, I, I, I had a great, I had a great time with this world. This world was really interesting, really creative. I think there was more that could be, could have been definitely discovered, but I kind of like the way it was done because we're kind of seeing it mostly through Charlie's point of view. So the amount of world building is perfect um, here. I love the pacing. Now, this could bother some readers. The pacing could really bother a, a couple of readers just because it is very slow. It is a 600 page book and it is very slow. It could, let's, uh, let's be honest, if you wanted a tighter plot to a point, if you wanted less information, yes, it could be cut. But honestly, I was okay with this pacing because it sets up everything so the way that he kind of writes this is you you go all the way from when charlie's mom died and then you see the meetings with mr bowditch and then eventually you see mr bowditch's death and then you also see how he ends up um yeah how he ends up um in the other world so it is very slow pacing that sets everything up it kind of reminds me a little bit of and i darken um and in general the conqueror saga trilogy but also the um the kind of pacing that laura sebastian uses in her trilogies where like the first book is set up the second book is a little bit more set up but with other things going on in the third book is where everything happens. So it is, it reminds me of that. So I, so I'm not bothered by this pacing, but I do think that there will be readers who could be bothered because it is very slow and it doesn't get to like the big part of the plot until at least 50% of the book may if not a little bit more. So yeah, that could bother readers. It didn't bother me at all. Um, yeah. So the themes in this book, I think, are really interesting. I think they're explored pretty well. Um, in uh, At least through Charlie's point of view, I think they're explored very well. And they have a very... And they spend enough time on the page. It, it, feels, it feels natural. It feels good. <laughs> the characters. Now, I did enjoy the characters, especially Charlie's character. I thought his character was really really interesting um and I enjoyed all of them I did have a a weird uh I have mixed feelings actually I have mixed feelings on Stephen King's blindness representation here however at the same that the reason I have an issue is because of the way I think Charlie discussed it but at the same time I feel like it is accurate to the way that 
I have seen able-bodied people discuss disability. So like at the same, while I have mixed feelings about the way this was written and how Charlie behaved around our only blind character, I think it's really accurate to how able-bodied people tend to talk, uh, at least around me, they tend to behave around me um, uh, when it comes to my blindness and the way that they talk about and, and the way that they seem to think about disability. It feels accurate in that area. However, I I will say that it, it can, it, I just have mixed feelings about it, but I do feel things to feel accurate on that. But the other characters were actually kind of interesting. I did find the curses in that in the other world very very unique in 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 um in the way they were created i think the one thing i'm gonna be nitpicky about though i understand that charlie was the promised prince which who was basically the heir uh to bodage but um why did his appearance change in the in, in the other world, like, why did his hair turn blonde and his eyes turn blue? I don't understand. This was never fully explained, and I, I, I don't, I don't quite understand why this happened. I, I, I it, I don't know. It reads strange to me. I just don't understand why this happened, and... I don't quite, I don't quite, I don't quite know how to feel about it. So overall, a really good story. I think I found a new favorite book. It is so enjoyable. I really like it a lot. And it was really, sorry, uh, really fun to read. And I, I, I enjoyed it so much. Definitely a new favorite book and a new favorite kind of story. So I enjoyed it, I rated it four stars. Let me know what you think. And also, what other Stephen King books would you like me to, would you like to see me review? What other Stephen King books do you recommend? I'm kind of going on this journey so I can read more Stephen King books because I really have been meaning to do it for years. And I am now taking the time to read more Stephen King. So please tell me what you would recommend. What books do you recommend? From by Stephen King. What are your favorite Stephen King books? What Stephen King books do you want me to review? Tell me all of that in the comment section. I want to start off by saying thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, especially if you made it to the end. As, again, I will ask, let me know the books you want me to read uh, by Stephen King to review. I have a short story collection that I read. It will be a short eventually. Um, and second, I am also very sorry I'm late. Uh, this week has been particularly draining for me and I, it hasn't really been the best week. Honestly, I'm just going to complain for a little bit. It's been, in, it's been an okay week to some degree. Like good things have happened, um, mostly good things, but uh, I, I also had, oh, sorry. But I also had a call with Social Security on Monday to see if I could get some some help from them because I've been trying to get them to raise my benefits um I uh I need it at the moment for uh rent purposes and bills and stuff like that and I've tried to get them to reach, to raise my benefits to well nothing so they have not been helpful this has been going on kind of for three months and I never thought that a conversation with social security would drain me so much but like I had one conversation with a with the with social security and I was just like one afternoon gone I had I, I the good thing I did it was edited that day but like still and for the most part I just had the rest of the week just felt kind of draining after that um so I've sort of been slightly drained I apply for a job which might be uh which I might get uh at the moment um and then we also have uh and then i i um after a couple of years i've been trying to get a fiverr up so i can offer my beta reading services and after years i finally was able to do that um it, it took forever but i was finally able to do that um it, and i spent an entire afternoon like i started at like 2 30 or 3 p.m on thursday 
and I finished at like 7.20 and the only breaks I took were for dishes and food. So it took me that long and that drained me a little further because Fiverr is not the most accessible as a seller to set up your profile. So it was a bit of a nightmare to, to look, to actually go through with what Fiverr needed me to, to do. It was, it was a bit, or, and stuff like that. I have it set up now and it looks good. And now I'm just sharing it and, and trying to get some work out, out of freelancing, if anything. But it's, it's, it's been a bit, it's been a lot. So this week has been particularly draining and I have not, and I just haven't felt like doing anything. So this is why this review is late. Uh, hopefully I will have Fall of Ruin and Wrath, which is the next review. And it's much longer, somewhat early. I somehow doubt it, but we can hope, I guess. And I just... I'm just very, I'm just very, very, I'm just a little tired um, and I'm a little drained, but I wanted to get this out for you and, um, and, and you got a complaining session out of it. I don't usually complain in my videos, but like, well, I, that's not true. I don't usually complain in my reviews. I save complaints for the, for the vlogs, but I've not been vlogging due to burnout. So I'm complaining now. <laughs> it's been a great time, isn't it? Um... Um, so yeah, that's that. So I've just been particularly drained. It's just been a lot this week. It, felt, it has felt like a lot, like just, just too much. And now the worst part is I feel like I need to rush the edits on, on a book because I, you know, I need the, I need the, 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 um, I need the stability somehow of money at the moment and living on a fixed income sucks. So that's where we're at. That's where we're at in my mental health. The other thing I wanted to say is that uh, this book, um, I did, again, I, I did enjoy it. Uh, but I wanted to say, I'm remembering now as well, that the, um, the appearance change, Charlie's appearance change, is, I think, pretty common in anime. I, uh, I think for like, I don't know if it's for both male and female power fantasies, but I do remember at least one anime where like this guy was um bullied in school or something along those lines and then he was able to get through the, to this new world and the moment he was there he like he changed entirely and that change registered in the real world as well so like he ended up changing uh like his appearance changed when he like grew in this new world so I would say it's pretty common in anime, but I don't usually see, or it could be common in anime, but I don't, I've never seen it in a book like this where it's like, he's the promised prince. So he turned into a blonde haired, blue eyed guy. I, I don't know. And now saying this out loud, I'm being reminded of Thor <laughs> because I read the novelization of the movie when I was a teenager and I remember that he had blonde hair and blue eyes anyway. But yeah, that's kind of, those are the things I wanted to say. Anyway, thank you for listening to my complaints as well as watching this video. If you are interested in my content, consider subscribing and turning on notifications. I will link my Fiverr below if you are more comfortable that way. You could also email me if you're looking if you're looking for beta reading but you're not comfortable using Fiverr and are more comfortable using something like PayPal and just sending stuff to me uh, for beta reading. Uh, so you could do that if you're an author. And hey, if you like the way I review uh, books, I do, you know, I do want to also help people before publishing and give them similar critiques, except it'll be a little bit different slightly because I will offer more suggestions. But if you do, if, if I can find, like if I find a suggestion, something like that, but if you want, you know, my style of review bef on your manuscript before it is published, definitely uh, check out my uh, Fiverr or email me and I will go from... And I'll go from there. We can make sure that happens. Also, check out my website where you can find um, where you can find parts of my writing. You can find my books there. You can find my Kofi if you want to support me that way. On my website, you can pretty much find pretty much everything. I just need to add my Fiverr to my website, basically. Um, so if you would like to, uh, if you would like to do that. You can definitely find that. Yeah, you can find me there. And with that, thank you so much for watching. Um, happy reading. Let me know what Stephen King books you want me to review. And until next time, consume stories. Bye.